Well, that's the best update for compositors. <laughs> Blackmagic Design released new update of DaVinci Resolve 18.5. Public beta is now available for download. And I installed it, tried it, and today I'm gonna share with you the most exciting features which I found as a 3D artist and compositor. Welcome back to my channel and let's get started. In this video we are going to talk about the most powerful and useful features new update brought to DaVinci Resolve. We are not going to focus on automatic generated captions, TikTok quick experts and other kind of small stuff that was already covered by other YouTubers. For me as a person working in the post-production industry and using DaVinci Resolve on daily basis with my personal videos and using it as a grading suit in our studio, the most important features are about pipeline and compatibility. And the first we will talk about the most hyped feature right now called Relight. Oh boy, that's gonna get interesting. Blackmagic advertises this feature as a simple tool which generates new light source with help of AI, which you can adjust and change light in your scene. But when I started testing it, it reminded me something, but we'll get to that a little bit further. What this tool basically does, it creates approximate normal map, which is smooth and serves the purpose of Relight. Here is the process. You add a Relight node, and it shows you the behavior of various lights, just like in 3D. Directional light, point source, and spotlight. DaVinci creates the shadow map that shows you which regions will be affected by the changes you do in standard grading tools. For example, I set the directional light as I like, and now I can just go and increase global exposure in HDR wheels, and here is the result. Based on the shadow map DaVinci created, I did changes only in white regions of the mask, just like in usual power window, and here is the before and after. The result is pretty exciting, now we have more volume and contrast in the shot, but that's not all. If you create another relight node and put tick on output surface map, you will see the normals and you can feed it to the next relight or a fixed node. Then in the second node, you choose which surface map to use. And if you change it to use input 2, it will use surface map generated for the first node. And that implies for the question, can you actually feed the normal maps from the multi-layer EXR from the full CG shot into this node with the purpose of relight and diffusion? And the answer is yes. Here for example I have the shot rendered from Unreal Engine and normal map in media pool. Now I create relight node and it will generate for me a standard shadow map, which is blurry and very basic. But if I want more details, I will use normal map which I exported from Unreal Engine or if I have it in the EXR file. I just drop normal map into the node window, connect it to the second input of Relight node and in Relight node for surface map I choose use input 2. Now I have the highly detailed normal map and I can work with it and change light direction. Yes, I know that DaVinci already had the shader node before, which allowed you to relight VFX shots using normal maps from EXRs, but it was not that good in visual representation and it had kind of low performance about what this tool reminded me. Actually, for example, Photoshop can create normal maps and this feature of the relight tool actually reminded me generating the normal maps in Photoshop to properly relight the scene or change lights. And I'm quite surprised that DaVinci Resolve right now can use this technology with the help of AI to generate relatively fast the normal map for the videos and for the stills. In conclusion, the OFX will be a great tool in hands of a professional colorist or compositor. Combined with magic masks and power windows, it may widen the possibilities of the skilled artists. Now let's move to another feature, and this is USD import. Blackmagic finally added the possibility of importing USD files into DaVinci Resolve Fusion. USD stands for Universal Scene Description. And this type of file contains geometry, cameras, textures, materials, light sources, and other information in the scene. That helps to create comfortable pipeline when using multiple softwares. As I use Unreal Engine, for example, I can easily import USD scene from Blender and I will have everything I need in Unreal, including lights, cameras and even sequence with the keyframes which I can edit as USD does not bake the animation like, for example, FBX does. It allows DaVinci Resolve Fusion right now be compatible with more industry standards and perform compositing with match moved cameras and 3D scenes made in other software. And that's the great thing. Blackmagic, thank you. And another small but very important feature, multi-merge node. 
Damn, I'm talking too much about Fusion in this video, but anyway. I used to make a lot of motion graphics for my previous YouTube channel and I was really frustrated that there was no option to merge multiple media inputs with one node. Finally, it happened. We have multi-merge node and we can connect multiple layers into it. That is excellent, again, especially for compositors who can combine multiple sources and merge them with just one node. Now switching on color page updates. There were a few interface changes over in there. They moved clips button and added the quick export option just like in the cut page. Very comfy, but the main point is the color management for timelines. Let's say you're working on TV series and you have each episode as timeline in one project. And if something had changed, for example, DOP decided to choose different camera for the particular episode, or you need to make HDR delivery, and in that case you need to change the color space transform or any other thing can happen in which you would require changing project settings instead of changing just the timeline settings. And instead of manually assigning input for the footage in the media pool if source material has changed, you can just change the color management in the timeline. And I believe Darren Mostyn will appreciate this feature just as much as I do. Changes also been made to the color space transformer effects, which I use quite often in my personal videos, and adding quick swap was just a cherry on top, as I used two nodes to change color space to work in color space, as I prefer to work in the DaVinci White Gamut and DaVinci Intermediate. Another thing that excited me is remote monitoring. It allows to share the high quality output to the client when you are performing remote grade. Now you don't need to share all of your nodes or have the second display to share the clean feed output from DaVinci Resolve. This feature works only in Resolve Studio version. All you need is to sign into Blackmagic Cloud account and send the link to the client to join. Client is also required to have the Blackmagic account and when they click the link and try to join, they are asked for registration and after that, they can easily monitor what you are preparing. Few of my colleagues already tested it and they claim that the quality is really good despite of the latency that they experienced. It was about 10 to 12 frames. Obviously, I didn't cover all of the features that update brings to us, as I don't work, for example, with sound edits and Fairlight, but there are some good improvements with audio classifications which make your project more organized, automatic subtitles and many more, the list just keeps going. But this was my personal list of the features I found exciting in this recent update. If you have any other features which you like the most, please share them in the comments. And if you like this video, and if you would like to see more videos about Unreal Engine, post-production stuff and color grading, leave a like and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And see you in the next one.